Good evening and welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we have Mark Ford on. How are you doing, man? Good. Thanks for giving time. I know you're on the road and you're probably tired from <laughs> traveling. So we'll try to make this a fun talk. Yeah, good. It's not so um, bad today. Day off, just driving. Oh, is it? It's got here. I'm in the middle of Montana. So, so Mark Ford right now is doing some, um, some makeup dates. And um, but I want I figure we talk about some of his past work and some of the stuff he has coming up and just kind of whoever isn't familiar that follows me, they should be following him and checking out his solo stuff. I actually a little brief intro. I actually like most people fell into you through the Black Crows, and mm -hmm. the, you were on the probably the three my three favorite albums, most people's three favorite albums. Um, I don't want to be Black Crow centric, but from there after you left. You've had a big career. You've had a lot of really great solo albums. You were working with Ben, ben uh, Harper. You did some good mm -hmm. albums there. Um, you did a lot of production too. You did a lot of producing of bands. It almost feels like you were like in a band and then you just in solo and then you produce something. It almost feels like you are kind of like breaking it up a little bit. Did you kind of, did you have like a plan or is it just kind of how you, whatever comes up? No, but, man. I mean, I, you know, um, yeah, I, I you know, secretly, I always thought like, well, I've learned a lot making a lot of records. If I took that, I'm sure I could, you know, get somebody through a record. I made enough of them to figure it out. And so it just sort of lined up. It just opportunity came and I I took it and I tend to look for something different than what I've been doing, usually, because if I get a little bit too complacent with what I'm doing, then it's. You know, am I really at my best at it? You know, I mean, things can get to be a drag when you're on the road too long or, you know, if you're not on the road long enough or, you know, it's 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 good to mix it up. But honestly, there's no plan. I'm just really sort of. A go. I thought you were, you, honestly, but then when I started looking at the way your way it breaks down on paper, I'm like, yeah. it actually looks like a pattern. Like, like well, you do yeah. one and you do one off. You're like, I'm like, oh, he's breaking it up. You're like, some people do like an album and then a movie. Like, it looks like you had almost a plan. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, by the time you get done, it's, I just never, uh, to develop a, a thing up for the road, you have to stay on it. And I just never have done that. You know, so, so if I make a record, then of course, let's go out and, and sell it. And then, Inevitably, something happens, or by the time I'm done with that, I'm just exhausted. And the last thing I want to do is think about immediately running to uh, make a record and get back in the van. You know what I mean? It's like, um, so I just never really kept it going because there were also other things to do that didn't allow me to keep it going in a way. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I wear a lot of different hats and uh i haven't really established any real one way you know well you have, a, you have a great reputation with other artists beyond you know people just know you from the black crows or or from you know burning tree or, or other, other art bands you've got a great reputation you actually turned me on to steep water mm. I, I came across because like i said i tend to follow a band and an artist and like when you left the band i kept following you you know and really enjoy your solo work mm -hmm. all the way through um, of course, like I, Fuzz Machine is awesome, by the way. I, <laughs> um, I love all your stuff. But I love that. That came out, I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, yeah. And I've been listening to Live in Germany a lot lately, too. We'll, we'll get back to that. But um, I lost my train of thought. What was great is I saw the uh, little production piece you did with Steepwater. I was like, oh, who are mm -hmm. these guys? Mark's got Mark digs them enough to check them out to produce them. And uh, yeah, I, I dig them now. They're, they're pretty awesome. Actually, you had uh, Jeff on. Uh, the show cool. a month ago he's a really good guy yeah. so that was pretty yeah. awesome yeah that that was cool yeah i mean um that was a fun record you know obviously ryan bingham's record was a, his two records i did those two that was uh got a lot of mileage out of those and, yeah um did you, you know, play one of those right too your son played yeah Bingham. elijah was elijah uh came in after the Mescalito because their mm -hmm. bass player they lost their bass player so I I gave my son a bass for his birthday and I said learn the song get in the van with these guys and so uh, 
he was in the band and, and then we did the next record and and um and then they went on to bigger better things i think um and now elijah is uh playing bass with gary clark jr no way really yeah he's and so i was in fact i was just texting him he just played my home <laughs> <laughs> is in austin and they just played la or you know we don't know beach anyway close to home so that's awesome now does he play guitar too like and he's playing with ben harper it's gary and ben and <laughs> so the whole family affair yeah so, really that's pretty crazy and then your, your wife's a, got a really good voice too she's a good singer i've seen you yeah, guys i'll sing. do some stuff um yeah she doesn't do it professionally but you know she just have you guys talked about doing something together well, she likes to be involved, but she doesn't like anything else but singing. So <laughs> any of the other stuff. So you can sing anywhere. You don't have to get involved yeah. in the BS, you know. But um, yeah. I mean, her dad was in was a musician. So they're both sides, you know, both sides of Elijah's family got it. So that's pretty awesome. So let's talk about the um, one thing that's really great about you is you 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 play and you be able to play you can jam with like anybody and you have and i don't know and this actually maybe phrases the question do you think you have a certain tone or sound because i almost think you're it's it almost depends on what you're working on i mean you have a it has almost like a feel when i hear you i know it's you playing but i wouldn't say that's a certain sound that you have yeah you know what i'm saying because like you have you play certain guitars but i mean like i, I you listen to some of your albums and i'm like i hear whereas you didn't get certain credit and i'm not going after black Rose. On those albums, I know. Listen to some of your soul stuff. Where you flavored those albums and why? I can you can hear it, you know. Yeah. So that's a, I, it's more of a style, like when you play. It's not a sound like some guitar players. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think the sound gets involved with the style for sure. There, there becomes a, a sound to the style, but but yeah, if you know anything more than. If you know a thing about tone, then you, you can start hearing the differences in guitars and amps and stuff. Right. Because I've never really stayed with the same anything, you know. I, right. Like, I'm the same way with with gear. I like to just like, well, I, I really, what else, you know, or just this, just to keep myself interested or I'll, I'll completely change gauges on the strings and, and go super light or, or way heavy or mix or just to keep my head in the game you know because once i go into autopilot and eh, boring you know what i mean it's not it's not really about boring it's about am i pushing the limits am i being creative am i get, if i'm really bringing anything or am i just coasting it and taking your money <laughs> you know this is kind of, but it's funny because a lot of guitarists don't do that they, all they your find- money's all your tens of dollars. Oh, all your tens of dollars. All your- <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it, you know it was always impossible. Like, how is that working with your the Neptune Blues? Like, sometimes it's labeling your albums. Sometimes it's, you're playing with them. Sometimes it, are you playing not? How's that work? Well, with those guys, it's, it's it's that's because it's a band. It's a bunch of guys from Long Beach. Is it, so it's a set band of guys. Yeah, I mean the Neptune Blues Club is is a certain group of guys from Long Beach. Yeah, so that's essentially that band. And then the Sinners was a band. Mm-hmm. And the Fuzz Machine record, that was the band that was on tour for the Weary and Wired tour. Which is another good album. That involved, that involved my son and Muddy. And then the reason why I recorded the record was because doing that tour, uh, we toured all year, went to Europe twice, Russia, and all over the tour all year and then and I had written songs in the process and we were playing them and I just said look before we get done here give me two more days in the studio when we get home we got home off tour we took two days and just basically played these new songs the way we've been playing them live and that became Fuzz Machine which is a really fun album too so you really got a lot of groove to yeah, it I, I enjoy that record that's Elijah on guitar with me on that record well, it's smoking. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit, almost of the a little more electric sounding, more powerful. Kind of like it when you first see your "It's About Time." That album felt a little bit more rocker. And because each of your albums are a little bit different, some are a little more blues, some are a little more mellow. You, know, you always had different, little different flavor to them. 
but that one feels yeah, like you're rocking out a little more. What I'm doing. I mean, it's, you know, like for the Holy Ghost record, I was sitting around. I mostly was playing the acoustic guitar for several years, just not really playing out anywhere. And those songs developed from acoustic guitar and from that sort of standpoint. And so they're much more singer songwriter oriented and fuzz machine developed because it was a four piece band out on the road for a year. And those songs <clears throat> were the songs that I wrote for that band. You know, Well, it's fun though, because then like I'm always in different moods. Like I like to play different strings and different sounds. I'm always, I'm never happy. And I'm, with music is the same way. So like with you, it's like, you have a bunch of different albums that you can listen to depending on the mood you're in. Like, it's not like just certain bands. You can, I'm not in the mood to listen to that band right now because I'm not in that mood. Right. You know, well, we've got a couple albums, got a couple goes, moods there for you. <laughs> it goes it goes both ways because I have fans that like some of the stuff but not so much of the other stuff. So, you know, a sm the smarter business plan would be make one good one <laughs> and do that. You're all, you're all good. Neil Young does the same thing. And so... And he loses some of his audiences sometimes, you know what I mean? But so I just, um, I think it's just, I'm just following what's keeping me interested and in, see where it's it lies. Safer. You know, it, you know, dangerous when you get bored, you know, it's, you know, you've, you've worked hard for your life. And you've found a good, good, I think you're on a good path. I think you're doing good. You look great. You know, it's good to see your gym. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was happy, you know, were things like, like so with, with the crows what was interesting they brought you guys in and they started mixing the band up i saw you guys on uh the three snakes and that was it was really great because even for the band they stopped doing all the hit singles when you first go there you're like oh, i don't know i don't know and then i got there and i was like i like this i like the fact that i can listen to any of these songs elsewhere i like the fact i'm hearing different music and then seeing you play live and everyone else you know it was just fantastic i was like blown away by seeing you play live you know and that was it for me um, but even like in all the guitar shows and everything, you're always with a different, some kind of different, crazy, cool guitar. You've had some really good guitars too, that you've done some, you know, and sounds. So I get a feeling you travel light though, right? With guitars, you can only try, grab a couple for each tour. Well, especially this one, this one is super light because, uh, you know, it, the opening slot on any tour doesn't pay enough to do anything. Right. Is it just so, you or do you have a band? It's just me and Phil Jones, the drummer. Mm -hmm. And we're traveling with, I got one guitar and one combo amp and um, a couple of snares and some cymbals. And they're carrying our drums for us. And <laughs> Barry, Oak, Barry Oakley's playing bass. So, you know, nice. we, we used to play together years ago. And so it just made sense. And he's, so it's a three piece. And then, yep. Uh, the way it's they've all sort of been trickling in and sitting in and so by the end of my set I got half of their band and my band <laughs> and people watching you know I know we're, me and uh, we're all over the place but uh, all the links will be there you guys see if you can see them out live now or if, you know, if you miss them catch them out and these albums that we're talking about are just they're all fantastic um, so I just want to add that yeah, right now people. I'm out with Almond, Almond Betts band and wherever that may be in your neighborhood if you see that yeah we'll be there all right. So one of the things that you also were in, which is so yeah, magpie, mag, magpie salute. The magpie that, salute. Yeah. Once yeah. again, that was another good band. <laughs> that yeah. ended quickly. Sure did. Were you doing any songwriting uh, in that? Yeah, Rich opened the door a little bit. Okay. Um, well, I know that there's certain dynamics to certain bands. I'm not going that. It's not the angle of like, oh, this and this. Could be Black Crows have a certain dynamic, but you're a great songwriter, and I'd yeah, love but, to hear you. But the, being... but the reality is, the reality is, Magpie was Rich's band, so right. it was run very similar to the rest of the things that he does. Right. Well, and he yeah. opened it up a little bit, and we, yeah, I did write co-wrote a couple of songs. I honestly didn't have a whole bunch ready. I kind of thought we were going to go in and make stuff right. up, but. It turned out I needed to show up with a bunch of stuff, and I just <laughs> just don't sit around trying to make up right. songs unless I Did need to. Come you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I got other shit I gotta do. <laughs> I was surprised that I, I feel like everybody was surprised when all of a sudden the album came out, and then a month later, that uh, 
it wasn't a band anymore or it's in a hiatus. I'd like to see the band do something again. I, I'd like to, you guys could, you know, hopefully. No, we all got left out in the cold. Rich yeah. changed his number and the Black Crows were on tour. I know. So off we go, you know. Yeah. And here I am doing this and I don't, you know, I don't, we'll see what happens. We'll see what this tour brings and what the next project is going to be. It's like, um, it's, it's an exciting time. I'm, I'm getting excited about playing again. It's fun playing. And How's it I'm out there on the road with the, with COVID and clubs opening? How's it out there? It's I, the people that are showing up are, yeah. I mean, the feeling is, is amazing, you know, cause people are doing Dying. it again together and it's, you know, we've had a great time and there's been no problems you know, don't be stupid and get your shots, wear a mask. Yeah. I mean, I'm vaccinated. I wear a mask when I need to get out in the crowd and stuff. Mostly it's just me and Phil. What's also crazy. What do I think I love, I love when you play slide guitar, you know, it's, you. And, 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 you know, and the thing with slide guitar is you either play it really good or you just can't play it at all. <laughs> it's, there's no, I, I, I just like, oh, he's a mediocre uh, slide guitarist. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, really gotta know well, yeah, well, yeah, because when it's bad, it's really bad. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, I, I that was a that was a necessity thing, you know. I didn't. I said that I could do it, and I had to show up and do it. But luckily, the thing I had to do was pretty simple, so I had a I had a big learning curve. Um, you taught yeah. it yourself, so you've had to pick it up and learn it yourself, and kind of. Well, I I. You know, I told Rich I could do it, and all I really had to do was yeah. you know, so and by hanging out with those guys and getting a, such a good lesson in you know southern music and and stuff and and being a, being around Rich, you know, I started obviously play with it more, and by the next record, I was I guess I think yeah. descending was the next record, right? So I was kind of getting a little bit of a handle on it, but. And I played with Ben and I'm, like, well, I'm not going to play slide, you know, and uh, uh, another guy that was fun, uh, I toured with Ben a uh, for eight or nine months mm -hmm. and that was cool. That was a good learning experience. Was it? Yeah. I, mean, it's, I love it because I mean, there is like, I like, there's a lot of club, club footage of you playing out there and a lot of you jamming with, you know, a lot of different artists which is a skill unto its own to be able to go out and just jam with other people and not have, you know, there's a lot of huge artists that can't sit in with anybody. They can't, you know. Well, to me, that's, to me, that's what I'm doing. I'm a musician and I play with people and it's, it's I want to get in the conversation. I don't want to perform songs. I could care less about performing for you. I want to get too. in the conversation <laughs> and see what can, no, no, what, you know, I, mean, I know I'm, I'm just joking with you. Yeah, but um, I want to have something create from nowhere and have you share it with me. What's interesting is, yeah, anytime I watch any kind of thing with you, I sounds like a person. I know you're gonna. It's not. It's not. It could go off path. You could jam. It could be something different. Which I like that. No matter no matter who you're playing with, any footage I see, I just know it's going to be a little different. Which is yeah, exciting. It's a live experience, and. You know, I want to, you know, I'm there to have fun. And that's what, that's how I have fun, you know, because it, it really is means the conversation is, is alive and happening between the guys on stage. And if we're excited, that's going to translate for you. And sometimes yeah. that means yeah. horrible mistakes and just awful crashes, but that's, you know, cool too yeah but don't you don't you think that like if you've been playing so long as you've been playing even when you get to the part you, you would think you know it's horrible you know certain ways to play on a bad notes you know what i mean you talk, talk to people like like that jam they're like yeah i know it could be a bad note but i also know three of the notes that will kind of blend and get me back out of there so unless you yeah. have those guys that are just going i know exactly you know what i mean you kind of have yeah. a back door because you have this you know tool yeah that's the rule right it's all in the recovery <laughs> yeah, you look like you're meant to fall. You stand up like that, uh, you know. Uh, right, Inspector I mean, Clouseau. If 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 you if you're not falling down once in a while, you're not trying anything new. That's for sure. 
live in Germany. That just popped into my list of music by some place that I listen to. Oh. It really feels like it's live because the first song you're actually uh, talking to uh, it's the sound guy or whatever. <laughs> you actually left that in. Oh, yeah. We were actually mixing the monitors during the first song. I was surprised to hear it because like literally just put it on. You're like, my monitors. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. But it was, it's, it's about as raw as you can get. You know, the club it's a tiny, tiny little club and they filmed it and, and multi tracked it. And then they just said, look, we've got this footage. Do you want it? And I said, well, yeah. And uh, tried out a couple guys to mix it. And, and I just thought, well, wow, I, I think I can do that. Let me, I'll just, I'll give it a try myself and just, you know, sat at home and turn on the computer and balanced it the way I wanted to hear it, the way the best I could get it to sound to me, you know, and, and there it is. Well, what, what would you think would stop you? Cause I know you've, is, is it, and I may be wrong. As far as producing yourself, you like producing other people, but don't you kind of, is it kind of producing yourself is where you kind of feel like, well, you like to kind of lay back on it. Is that more the hesitation? Cause you're a good producer. It's on a bunch of albums at this point. Well, it's a lot of work to do both. Right. Um, you know, I mean, because to me, a producer is like a, a opinion. And if that opinion is my opinion, I, I already have one. I, you know, it's like I, there's so much stuff to pay attention to. And as a producer, if I'm the artist in the scenario, I want to be the artist. I don't want to have to worry about all the other stuff. And I realize it's better. I usually get a better, as long as I'm, you know, you pick the people you, you trust and say, how do you hear it? They're not going to make you into something you're not, you know, and it usually... Well, yeah. You usually get something, well, always. Do you always get something that you wouldn't have done? I, I think if it was me, like, doing it, I, I would have, I'd have a hard time because I'd be thinking of other things instead of my playing. I'd be thinking, like, how's this sound? How's this going on? Like, I'd be thinking of five other things than the actual yeah. piece. So when yeah, artists do that, I'm, I'm like, I don't know how to do it. I want to know, I want to play the best guitar and sing the best to make sure the lyrics are correct and do all that other stuff. I want to be down i want to be in the middle of it not not a big picture view of the whole thing how long were you playing guitar before uh burning tree became i mean because by the time you did burning tree you already you were pretty ripping on guitar so i mean well i i guess i got my first guitar at about 10 and i was yeah. in clubs at 15 so yeah oh you know i was maybe sense. 20 Maybe I was playing 10 years when I, Burning Tree, when we made that record. You think it's the clubs, though, that made you play like a man that's been playing blues clubs for a good part of his life? I think it's, there's a part of you that, like, by that age that you're playing, you played like a man that was not 20 years old, you know, <laughs> is what I'm saying. I'm like, where did you learn to play guitar like that? Because the jamming and stuff, is, it's like a years on the road. You know what I'm saying? Like, at this point in your life, you should sound like that. Like, you're beyond that. But that was like when you were 20 years old. Well... I started doing that. That's how I learned to play is, you know, the other guys that didn't know how to read music and had an instrument, you just showed up in the garage and made music. And, and that's how it always was. And I think that, you know, being untrained, that's just how I hear the music. And, you know, it's, uh, it was, it's at this great. point, you do pop up with a lot of other players. Have you had any thoughts of like maybe putting together an album like one or two tracks of each each people you've played with over the years, like a kind of collective of different artists? A deal, like all your favorites. Uh, no, I mean i I haven't really had any projects imagined. No, like, like you know, like, you know what? If I had a wish list, I would I would play with this guy and I would have this guy do a couple songs. Like yeah, you know, like 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 a, like a favorite of. Album, oh, well, just your favorite. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, most of those people live all over the world, and unless you're emailing them for tracks, and then your mind is, you know, it's like, eh. it's there's lots of people I'd love to work with, but um, the funny thing is that you should, sometimes you gotta, it's better not to work with the people 
people you think you're going to work with because it doesn't work, you know, right. and it's better. Maybe you don't meet your hero sometimes because well, not because any fault of you or their them, maybe just the jive isn't right and wasn't meant to be. You are yeah, cosmically a different person than a lot of other musicians, you know, I talk to a lot of musicians, so how you do stuff is totally different than a lot. Usually people have a certain this and a rule and a that, you know what I mean? You're kind of just writing your own path, you know, and uh, which, which is great. But it wouldn't fit with like a lot of other people have certain rules. And you don't really have rules, you know, that you follow. <laughs> so, you know, rules are awesome, but I think they're meant to be tested for sure. And, you know, the real life is there at the, at the line between chaos and order, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is the next plans? So like when you're writing, so when you write albums, you you write only when songs come to you, right? You don't just sit around and say, "I'm gonna do an album. I'm gonna write a song." You write when you're inspired, or it's just like you play guitar around the house sometimes. Or some people, that's the other thing. Some people don't play guitar all the time. Some people just pick it up for a reason. Some people just play it all the time. Which guy are you? I don't play all the time. I don't touch it if I don't have to sometimes. I just. All right. right. Um, because when it is time to pick it up, I'm very serious and very into it. And. Uh, but to hear that, to be somebody like me who, who doesn't play that well, and hear somebody like you who plays so well, and you're like, I don't really want to touch it. This breaks my heart. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. It's just, uh, it's not that I don't want to. I get, I get. Yeah. I'm just harassing you about that. I mean, it's like you have a different skill set. I mean, that's just what it comes down to, and how you play, and, and you know, it's, you've got it mastered for what you do. You know, I get that. It's gonna be fresh and inspiring. Um, but it felt like you were kicking out a lot of albums for a while, though. Like it did feel like you were in a a cycle almost of making albums. You know, and then well. The reality of the time is a lot longer than maybe it seems. Yeah. What are you doing in the downtimes then? Like if you're just not touring and stuff, you know, you're not just producing, you kind of do clubs and... Well, I mean, last two years, we've, it's been pandemic. I've been at home. And the three or four before that, I was doing Magpie. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're already 10 years ago, you know. Oh my God, that is... This 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 whole Armageddon thing the past two years has just really just thrown off my my clock of time, you know. Yeah, I dig it. I mean, it's really kind of a reset. Like, it's really destroyed people's routine, and it, and I think it's really important to do that sometimes. It did destroy a lot. It did destroy me. I do IT. I was going to work. I was the only person going to work every single day. My life has not changed. It has been Groundhog Day. I've been alone. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, well, you, I was on the highway by myself. It was like being in a hallway, just like nobody there for like the longest time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, people those, in the building. You know, those, those things are different. Like, you know, know, everything did change whether people wanted to or not. Most people don't like it. So it's a forced, you know, shed some junk. And I think with the music industry, some, some really interesting things have come out with uh, certain artists. Some people are like, you know what? I don't think I want to tour anymore. I don't, you know, I think the face of touring and recording and doing their own stuff is, you know, doing other projects is, 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 is um, growing now. Well, the heyday of rock and roll is over, dude. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was always, it was always really hard to do and it's getting even harder. And now when you got half the people don't even want to go outside still, or let alone be in a big dark club with a bunch of other people, yeah. it's getting tough. Uh, so, but you know, there's, they're still doing it. Elijah's mm -hmm. getting out there. Let's see. He actually has an album. I know it's at least one album out, right? A couple albums out. Elijah has a couple records. A couple? He has solo records he's done, but yeah, he's uh, his main thing will be whatever Gary's dropping next. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, I like the fact you guys all do stuff. And yeah, 
as far as your wife singing, I, I'd heard um I was you guys were doing a really pretty gospel song. I think um some kind of C something I forgot what it was. It was really nice though. I really like it. Um, yeah. That's the other thing. So you've actually gone. You've changed over the years. You've cleaned up spirituality. Has that changed a lot? You for like being on the road and stuff now too. To me, it's gonna be a lot harder with just the negativity. You know. Um, well, I found out that really is it. It was mostly about um, sugar. <laughs> Long story short, I mean, alcohol just processes sugar. Right. And everything I ate was just the American diet. And I just, you know, got bad. And so to get good again, I had to really decide what worked for me. And I ended up following, finally following some doctor's advice. And my brain, I have a brain now rather than like a crazy sugar zapped inflamed intestined bad head craziness you know you cut out all your best. is it all cut out i might have to do that i think that's my one I'm week I'm, I'm on honestly at my my very best i ever have been right now that's awesome that's really good well yeah. this has been you know fantastic having you on I, you know I, I know you're kind of exhausted from driving all day and you know I wanted to have you on. I want the viewers to see you, see you're doing stuff. Mark, I want to thank you for being on the show. You know, it's been awesome. We'll talk again when you have some more music coming out and some makeup dates. So I just wanted to touch base with you and remind people that you're out there. And right. I've been just giving out these live albums, you know, lately. So I just uh, talk to you <laughs> selfishly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. It's, it's fun. Thank you. Okay, man. I want to thank you for being on the show. You have a good night. All right. Take care. Take care.